Hi there again. Um, today I would like to show you my radioactive collection. Um, the point is, as soon as you get yourself one of these, uh, if you get yourself a Geiger counter, you might as well want to have something to count, otherwise it's kind of pointless. Now, so I did a bit of a self-experiment. I, I gave myself like a month, uh, basically only a few days of that month, going to flea markets or used stuff stores just to look around old stuff that could be radioactive and I'm quite astonished I found a lot I found much more than I thought and this is a part of my collection and I guess I'll show you the stuff in detail so first of all I want to start with some normal background radiation and the point is radioactivity is normal it's natural it's everywhere anyway just a tiny bit, it just gets unhealthy if the levels uh, go way up, as with a lot of other stuff. So for my Geiger-Miller tube that I'm using here, it's a Soviet-made SBT-11A, uh, Alpha, Beta and Gamma probe. Um, 25-30 counts per minute is like normal background average, I would say. So let's go on to the first radioactive item, which is a uranium plate. Um, in here, somehow in the glassing, they used uranium oxide in the past. I think something for the coloring, something similar to the uranium glass we will see in a bit. So that's already quite obviously radioactive. Well, then we go on to uranium glass. This stuff is really pretty, I think. Um, this has also like 2% more or less of uranium oxide in the glass mix. They put it in to get this milky kind of color. And interesting is also if you have a UV flashlight, you can shine it on the uranium glass and it will be really fluorescent. It's a really pretty Simpsons-ish uh, radioactivity green, I would say. And this stuff here is quite clearly radioactive too. I think the plates are a bit less there in the back, but the copier uh, certainly is. But because uh, the radioactive material is embedded in the glass, and I mean glass is a really smooth surface, you don't break off speckles uh, that easy, it's actually kind of safe to handle, like it's no big deal to drink or eat out of some of this really I like my ginger ale with a little bit of alpha rays so let's continue this here it's a big chunk of uranium ore that I found in uh, the mountains in Switzerland and this is quite radioactive actually um, I think I described it to you in another uh, video more detailed so I'll leave that for here but you can see what I mean and also this thing here seems to be a little bit um, reactive to uh, ultraviolet light it just shimmers a little bit somehow I think if you're like really in a mine or in a cave where there's like uranium ore in the walls, you can kind of find it with a UV light or it helps at least a little bit. Then one other thing I'd like to show you are these toriated welding rods. Like a small piece of those I use for the cloud chamber as a source, which is really neat. They have 2% thorium and I think the rest is tungsten. They're not that strong, like it's actually quite a weak source. Okay, let's head on to the really strong one. Like this thing here is the strongest thing that I found till now. It's an old compass from the Swiss army. And as with a lot of other army um, stuff, they did use radium paint on these. Like for the glow in the dark effect that you could see it at night. And the point is like these compasses are really popular around here. I had one as a kid and a lot of other my, uh, friends of mine as well. And I mean, they 
did stop using radium paint at some point, but I think there's still a lot of these old ones, um, just like at people's houses. And I don't know, this thing scares me a tiny bit. It's really, really strong. And also to show you, there is a lot of gamma radiation also coming off of this actually. It's not that much uh, as I thought, but this is a thick steel plate. This is really steel, it's about 8 millimeters thick. I can put it on top and it will shield most of the radiation. But the Geiger counter still clearly shows radio radioactivity, so this thing is able to penetrate 8 millimeters of steel. Well, all the stuff you've seen before was like my stronger radioactive material that I found. But I also found some weak radioactive sources which are really interesting. I'll show you this in detail too. Well, just to remember, normal background is about 25 counts per minute. So here's the weak stuff. Um, I think I would like to start over here. Kitty litter. If you have a cat and you have kitty litter at home, go check it. It's radioactive. Um, no bullshit, it's really true. But it's very, very weak. And I think I read something that the point is the, the place where they kind of like dig out the stuff or mine it has like some trace amounts of thorium or uranium ore in the ground. So that's probably the reason. Um, this here won't work. It's very weak and I had like the Geiger counter in the bag of kitty litter like overnight to get myself a maximum of uh, 53. So it's very weak but it's measurable. Over here we have the potassium group. Potassium is really interesting. Um, the point is like potassium is not radioactive, but potassium has an isotope, potassium 40, which is radioactive. And it's very, very little. I think it's 0 0.001, if I'm not wrong, percent of all potassium on the world is potassium 40 and therefore is radioactive. Um, that means if you have quite pure potassium or something with a lot of potassium inside of it, you will be able to measure the radioactivity. This really works actually. First one here is plant ash. This is from my stove actually. I have an old school stove where I burn wood for the winter. Also, this is more like a long term thingy. Doesn't, yeah, a tiny bit. It actually picks up. What I also tried to do with this uh, plant ash is I cooked it up and I tried to get the potassium out of it or the potassium chloride. It's kind of like in a salt bound form. This stuff here is really mushy so I don't really want to put the detector right onto it. But it's more radioactive than only the, the plant ash. I could like double its activity I think. So I purified it a little bit. And this here is really funny. This stuff here seems to be healthy to put it into your bathtub or something if you want to take a bath. It says, I don't know, uh, it's this white powder here, well it's a bath salt I guess. And I figured out, it doesn't really say on the bottle exactly the percentage of the ingredients, but there you see potassium carbonate. And this stuff gave me around 150, 200 counts per minute when I did a long-term measure. But also here, this is difficult to get a short-term uh, measurement out of. And last but not least is my tritium keychain. These things are really cool. Maybe you know them. You can like buy them on the internet for quite cheap. The point is you have to have them in the dark. It doesn't really work at light. I'm not sure if this... Oh yeah, there you see. You see glowing inside? That's beta radiation hitting um, the wall of a glass vial which is coated in phosphor. 
and that causes the glow. So this thing will always glow. It doesn't need sunlight or so. It's glowing from the radioactivity, basically. But they're quite weak. The point is though, oh, focus. These things will give you a little bit of soft X-ray radiation and that's due to Bremsstrahlung. Because it's coated in plastic, the betos kind of um, interact with the atoms in the plastic and they will kick out some soft um, X-rays. So that's it for now. That was my radioactive collection and just in general, if you're planning to do some research like this as well, just inform yourself first, be careful what you're doing. It's not a healthy hobby, it's not healthy to fool around with radioactivity, but it's also not that dangerous if you're a little bit careful and you inform yourself and know what you're doing. So in this sense, um, keep counting and see you soon. Cheers.